straight ahead in KIMT News Channel 3's Weekend Edition. We'll tell you the latest on the roadmap for peace in the Middle East. And find out about a unique veterans memorial that's been across the country now making its appearance in Iowa. Plus, you'll hear the latest about a North Iowa school bus driver that's been charged with child endangerment. This is KIMT News Channel 3's Weekend Edition. Coverage you can count on. An appeal from Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon helped win support for a U.S.-backed Middle East peace plan. Israel has agreed to travel down the road to peace, but it won't be an easy journey. Both Israel and Palestine, Palestine say they're not getting all they want. CBS correspondent Aline Sergani is in Washington, D.C. with the latest. In a 12-7 vote, the Israeli cabinet accepted a U.S.-backed peace plan. It's not the first one they've agreed to, but this one is different. It requires the creation of a permanent Palestinian state by 2005. We simply need to start the wheel rolling. It is about time that we'll stop fighting and sit back at the negotiating table. The peace plan is split into three phases. In the first, Israel must withdraw its troops from Palestinian territories and it must stop building Jewish settlements in the West Bank. The Palestinians must crack down on militants like Hamas, a group that's claimed responsibility for a number of suicide attacks, many within the last week. With so much expected, both sides are waiting for, even expecting the other side to fail to hold up to its end of the deal. We have not seen any terrorist arrested yet by the Palestinian Authority. We have not seen even one illegal weapon confiscated. For us to succeed in what we want to do, and that is really to end the violence, we need Israel to change its behavior. There's some Israel says it still has major problems with the peace plan, especially where it concerns the fate of Palestinian refugees. And the Palestinian militant group Hamas says the plan would lead to internal Palestinian strife. Whether that translates into more suicide attacks remains to be seen. And should that happen, another roadmap for peace may be left by the side of the road. All eyes are now on Washington. President Bush praised Israel's endorsement of the peace plan. He will travel to Egypt and Jordan next month to help put that plan into action. In Washington, Aline Sergani, KIMT News Channel 3. This roadmap for peace has made history. It is the first time an Israeli government has formally affirmed the Palestinians' right to statehood. A Mason City school bus driver is charged with child endangerment. Yesterday we told you about Jay Powell, a Mason City school bus driver who received an OWI after sideswiping a parked car on Friday afternoon. In a follow-up investigation, Mason City police learned that Powell had picked up seven children from Washington school prior to the collision. Though none of the children from Washington were on the bus at the time of the accident, police still charged Powell with child endangerment in addition to operating the school bus while intoxicated. Leading off tonight's covering the nation, two people are dead and 20 others are injured in a cruise ship explosion in Miami. Officials say the explosion happened in one of the boiler rooms aboard a Norwegian cruise liner ship. Fortunately, no cruise passengers were injured in the explosion. Three people were killed and two were injured in a head-on cr crash in Oregon. The accident happened after two teens in this pickup truck crossed over the center line and struck another car head on. California police arrested the mother of a two year old girl after she had to be rescued from a running washer at a laundromat Moments in California. Later. A surveillance tape is what police used to show the mother putting the child into the machine. Topping tonight's covering the world, recovery efforts are underway in Algeria after an earthquake rocks the country. The bodies of five people were pulled out of two buildings today. Rescuers say that as of now, the earthquake death toll has passed 2,100, not counting the 9,000 injured civilians. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Paul Bremer, the American civilian administrator for Iraq, is continuing his tour. Today, engineers showed Bremer this port where water is being dredged for shipping. The port is reportedly in serious disrepair, not so much because of the war, but from long periods of neglect. Turning to local weather now, it was an absolutely beautiful day to be outside. Let's go upstairs to Chief Meteorologist Adam Frederick in the Storm Team 3 Forecast Center. Adam, I bet a lot of people are happy with your forecast today. Oh, I'm sure they were. It was a beautiful day outside. The only complaint I could really hear is that, you know, some people had to work and they weren't able to be outside and enjoy it.
Let's take a look outside right now on our Clear Lake Live Eye in the Sky brought to us by Lake Chevrolet. And while looking at our Clear Lake Live Eye earlier today, there were lots of people outside enjoying the lake as it was truly a beautiful day and temperatures tonight are still fairly comfortable. Right now we're talking about 63 in Albert Lee, Austin and Charles City with 60 in Rochester and Mason City. Now as we go on into the night, we're going to end up seeing those skies continue to be clear, calm winds, that means it's going to be cool. Those will be down into the lower 40s, but then as we go into tomorrow, will it be another nice day? Well, I'll tell you in your Memorial Day planner in just a few minutes. Thanks, Adam. An array of different cultures were celebrated in North Iowa this weekend. Coming up on KIMT News Channel 3's coverage you can count on, find out how this event really opened the eyes of some local residents. Plus, see how this unique memorial has finally made its way to Iowa after being showcased all around the country. This is KIMT News Channel 3's Weekend Edition. News with Adam Sutterston and Maria Rinaldi. Sports with Mark Woodley. And your Storm Team 3 forecast. KIMT News Channel 3. Coverage you can count on. Memorial Day weekend marks the unofficial start of summer, and some North Iowans kick things off right this weekend. KIMT News Channel 3's Aaron Leach tells us how some folks in Clear Lake celebrated the holiday weekend while getting back to their roots. Fun, food, entertainment, it looks like your typical community festival. But as these folks here in Clear Lake know, it's much more. It's just really a fun melting pot. That melting pot is the ninth annual International May Festival. And the festival's organizers say this year's international flair makes the celebration special for everyone. I think it's really important to any community to celebrate their roots, their heritage. Festival goers from all over took advantage of crafts from Indonesia, Ecuador, Africa, and other nations around the world. Another big hit was the lively music and, of course, the intercontinental food. One festival goer says she and her grandchildren are taking full advantage of all the festival has to offer. The girls are having a great time getting balloons and popcorn and listening to the fun music. She adds she's glad her grandchildren can participate in so many different activities. Schmidt says these activities really showcase ethnicities in an area where diversity isn't so recognized. We have such a diversity of people in the Midwest. People don't realize that we have such an international flavor and people from all over the world right here in the Midwest. And those looking to learn more about different cultures certainly don't have to go far. They don't have to drive or travel far away to find a little bit of different nations and what they have to offer. Schmidt says that even though organizing this weekend's event was time consuming, it ended up being a worthwhile experience where everyone had a lot of fun. In Clear Lake, Aaron Leach, KIMT News Channel 3. A portion of the proceeds from this weekend's festival will be donated to the Bill Wilson Metro Ministries International and Traction Action, a local ministry organization. Fallen Vietnam vets were honored in a central Iowa community in a very unique way. These people gathered for a service held in front of this moving wall, which is a half-size portable Vietnam memorial showcased at the moment in Anamosa. The wall is gracing the town's softball field, and it took over a year and a half for it to make the journey to Anamosa. I've seen hundreds, even thousands of people's lives touched by the moving wall because they can touch their son's name or their daddy's name or their husband's name, and it uh, means a lot. The wall has been in Anamosa since last week. It's been on tour throughout the country for over 20 years, carrying with it the names of over 58,000 veterans. Even after 100 years, the Wright brothers' legacy is still alive. Coming up on KIMT News Channel 3's coverage, you can count on see how this little dot in the sky made a big impression on some New Yorkers this afternoon. And those sunny skies warmed us up today. It will be a cool night, but will we end up seeing a warmer holiday yet? Find out next in your Storm Team 3 forecast. Presenting the Lincoln Mercury family. Well, the temperatures outside right now still are very comfortable with 60 degrees at the Mason City Airport. Dew point, not a lot of moisture out there. And with those clear skies, that's really going to allow this temperature to drop. Northeast winds still at 7 miles per hour. 
Outside right now, let's take a look on our Albert Lee Live Eye in the Sky, brought to us by Papa Murphy's. A nice, quiet night out in Albert Lee. A lot of people outside enjoying Fountain Lake as well. And it was just beautiful all across northern Iowa and southern Minnesota. And it's turned into be a mild night out there for tonight. As far as the high temperature today, up there into the mid-70s. So finally, we have temperatures that are back about where they should be for this time of year, at least when we're talking about the high temperatures. Overnight lows still are about 5 to 10 degrees below where they should be. And in the last 24 hours, of course, with no clouds, basically no clouds, we've seen no precipitation. Right now we have 63 in Albert Lee, Austin and Charles City with 60 in Rochester. A little cooler right now in Clarion at 59 degrees, but Fairmont, Mankato, Owatonna, 53 or 63, certainly not too bad. As far as the temperatures across the north central United States, we have lots of temperatures fairly uniform sitting right there in the upper 50s, some lower 40s. We have a seven, or some upper 50s and lower 60s. We have a 75 right now out in Miles City, but we do still have some of that cooler air continuing to make its way on off to the east with Green Bay right now at 51 degrees. As far as storm team 3, 3D weather flight, we have high pressure in control of our weather, and it's great when we have high pressure in control of our weather because then that gives us nice sunny skies and keeps things fairly easy to in the weather department and also with the, the high pressure and control of the weather for the weekend that means it's going to be a beautiful weekend as a whole instead of having low pressure after low pressure after low pressure moving on through bringing us stormy conditions. Storm Team 3 Sat Red shows that we have those mostly clear skies out there even as we go on into the night. Precision cast shows that we might see a few clouds pop up from time to time here and there through the overnight hours but again for tomorrow a mostly sunny day maybe a few partly cloudy skies in the afternoon but still continuing clear into tomorrow night so it looks like it's going to be another beautiful winter of a day out there for tomorrow. High temperatures tomorrow are going to be back up into the 70s, so another advantage there. Here's your Storm Team 3 forecast in detail. Tonight, clear, calm, and cool. Those will drop down in the lower 40s, maybe a few upper 30s with those near calm winds. And then for Memorial Day, doesn't look like any problems for those Memorial Day uh, uh, celebrations with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. East winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's your Here's your Memorial Day planner. If you're heading outside for anything, a picnic at lunch, maybe a barbecue, well, you're going to have temperatures nice and warm by noon up at 73 degrees, 71 by 7 p.m. Then for tomorrow night, continue clear lows dropping down into the mid to lower 40s. Here's a look at your five-day weather forecast. And as we go on into the week, we will end up seeing a few isolated thunderstorms on Wednesday and a few more possible on Friday. Some mostly sunny skies in between. And overall temperatures actually warming on up into the upper 70s and even a few lower 80s possible in some locations. So it looks like we finally put some of that cooler weather behind us and we're moving on to some much better, more normal weather. Yeah, that whole week, all 70, upper 70s, that looked nice. It's looking beautiful. <laughs> and as long as tomorrow's nice, I don't think And that shouldn't be a problem at all. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. An unexpected visitor made an interesting yet timely trip around Lady Liberty today. This flight is based on the Beeb Plyer trip that the Wright brothers took around the Statue of Liberty in 1909. An Ohio man decided to make the same trek around the New York Harbor landmark this afternoon to mark the 100th anniversary of the Wright's first flight. When people look for kidney donators, they usually turn to their family. Coming up on KIMT News Channel 3's Covering Your Health, you'll meet a man that received a gift of life from somebody who's not exactly related to him. Plus, find out some bad news about a widely used cholesterol-lowering drug.